şey anneme Şilem teyzeme falan da gönderdim şey resmi. Ben şimdi seni çekeceğim. Valuable member, actually vice president of the management board of Highview, Mr. Cevahir. Aside from being an active mentor and fund co-investor of the U.S.-based entrepreneurial initiative Endevo.org, Östanik is also the founding partner and board member of Lidiana.com for almost a decade. He is also a limited partner in 500 startups in Turkey since 2016, and he serves as an advisory board member. In addition to his experiences and entrepreneurship in hospitality industry and facility management services, he takes a role as Sciability Turkey's country chairman, a UK headquartered firm that enables, enables good commercial and philanthropic partnerships with the leading Chinese businesses and institutions. He is married and is father of two children. He is a graduate of Koch University, College of Administrative Science and Economics, Department of International Relations. He has a master's degree in management from the London CAS Business School in 2007, and furthermore, he is a country ambassador of Cass City alumni. He is BCCT member, Karadeniz Foundation steering committee member, Soho House founding member, Yedi Gastronomic Measurement Institutions advisory board member, and Inder member. He also holds membership for Corporate Governance Association of Turkey, Hotel Association of Turkey, and Fenerbahce Sport Club. Mr. Ismet Öztanek, the floor is very much yours. Please welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. I know it's very much complicated, but I'll try to make it as simple as possible. Uh, thank you so much by uh, inviting me here, the great uh, board and uh, steering committee members of International Bank uh, Balkan University, which uh, we we feel like from uh, Turkey as a up and coming and strong. Uh, Foundation uh, managed university, which is also quite uh, important back in Turkey. I mean, we have private ownership universities, we have publicly supported universities, but on the top, uh, what we have been experiencing in education industry is uh, these type of foundations are are the ones that 
that's been having the longest and more stronger, more reliable histories uh, behind. So, I mean, I guess as uh, international ba Balkan University students, you are, uh, you must be feeling yourself very lucky, and you will be enjoying these privileges uh, from now on as being a, a graduate of IBU. Okay, so. I know uh, Visar had shared so many details about myself, uh, but I'll just uh, try to uh, keep my part short about uh, the my, about my uh, business and social background. Then, uh, as a 33-year-old 30, uh, friend of yours, I'll just uh, try to make my presentation more friendlier. And I just like to have an um, interactive one. So by the time I will move on my slides, you will be uh, seeing my personal observations from my uh, 13 different partnerships, which I have started from the age of uh, 20, and uh, it goes till now. So I hope you'll enjoy, but please feel free to interrupt whenever you like, ask questions. And uh, if I make it too long, just warn me that uh, so that I can just make it as short as possible. Uh, so I think I can, Visa, I can move as much as I like, right? Shall I? Oh, it works? Okay, ah, good. <laughs> okay, so, um, and shall I put it like this? Do I have to do it like this or it works? Ah, okay. Okay, so uh, you have already, uh, thanks to Visar, just, is it? Is it? Oh. Ah, okay. Okay, yeah, thank you. So just, just to help you understand uh, more about the reason why you invited me here as a guest. Uh, I mean, I, I have a long family history behind, uh, which uh, goes back to, uh, like animal breeding and uh, trading like uh, five decades ago and and then uh, thanks to our uh, grandfather who just helped us to move all the way back uh, from uh, South Istanbul, and then we have started to uh, trade in first animal li livestock breeding. Then it, it went to uh, in, uh, metal and uh, st steel trading. Then finally to uh, hotel uh, development and uh, management. So it goes uh, back to 1990s that I, uh, I have also started my own career in, in the hotel business. It was in the uh, very uh, central uh, part of Istanbul, which is Taksim Square. Uh, how many of you have been to uh, Istanbul before? Can I ask that question? Okay, good. So, good. And we are, we are lucky in, in, in that. That's my second time in uh, Skopje, which is uh, great. I, I, I'm not sure of the season, if it's the, the best time to visit Skopje, but Still, I think uh, food-wise, we will be having a great uh, afternoon, thanks to Eser and uh, Mohammed. I, I, I hope so. Anyway, uh, I, had, I had my uh, undergraduate degree in uh, Koch University in Political Science and International Relations, followed by uh, management uh, post-graduate degree in, in, in London Cass Business School. And, uh, and then uh, at the age of 23, I, I have... I have <coughs> Uh, founded my own uh, hotel brand, but before that we had uh, 20, more than 20 years of family background in hotel business, so it wasn't like I, I woke up one day and I said, okay, I'm going to start a hotel business, so yeah, we, had a, we had a long history behind, uh, so I'm the third generation family member of a hotel business. And then... Um, 
the, uh, the, the business went well. Uh, we, we have now, uh, un under the same surname, four different uh, hotel investment and management companies. And th there are 16 hotels that uh, my family is in charge of. And I'm one of those uh, four companies, together with my uh, brother and my father. Well, we are not as crowded as before, uh, which is uncles and cousins. That's like one of the famous uh, topics of uh, the family business and delegations and everything. So we have been through that uh, since from 1990 to 2012. We were all together as a crowded family. Then uh, at 2012, we have uh, decided to continue with four different companies. So. Uh, my, my side is in charge of the Avangard Collection uh, hotel brand, which, which I'm, uh, I'm the founder and vice chairman of. And we have three hotels in Istanbul and one hotel in Bodrum right now. And uh, after that, um, sorry for the, this, okay, yeah. And uh, the hotel business went well uh, since uh, I would say 2000, uh, 2003, 2004 in Turkey. So, I mean, you must have been seeing the big results and everything. We are uh, in Turkey, like one of the 10 uh, countries in the world in terms of uh, conference and uh, uh, meetings and incentives uh, business. And also Istanbul has uh, become like one of the top destinations in the world. So we, we have also enjoyed that very much. As, as avant-garde, and, uh, and then uh, we, we uh, and food and beverage uh, business all has also become quite interesting. So we have opened our uh, own restaurant business as, as well as our catering business. So it was uh, quite important in terms of diversifying your own business. And, uh, but we didn't uh, just think like, okay, uh, it's good enough to be in the hotel management and development, but at, because at that, sa uh, at that same time, uh, it's also the real estate business that's become quite interesting in Turkey. So uh, almost 50% of the total uh, economy in Turkey uh, is composed of real estate development and construction. But uh, we thought like, okay, I mean, uh, we are in hotel and hospitality uh, businesses, but Let's, uh, think, let's think of it in another way. We have, a good, uh, I'm good, we have the necessary network and necessary building management, uh, hospitality orientation, and uh, also, I'll come back to that slide later on. Let's talk about business now. Uh, so we, we thought like, okay, it's not the hotel development and management itself, but apart from that, we can serve with other types of businesses to the rest of the 50% of the uh, market in Turkey, which is real estate market. So then uh, we have set up this uh, Lucis Initiative uh, company, which is uh, bringing the right managing and investor parties together in the rest of hospitality and business services industries. So it's too much uh, hypothetical. Uh, I think it sounds like too much hypothetical, but. I guess uh, if when I uh, continue to move on my conversations, you will uh, start to understand uh, more of the connections. So uh, Lucis Initiative is now becoming five years old and uh, it's uh, employing uh, almost 1,300 em uh, employees under uh, four different uh, companies. And uh, I, I already told you about uh, Avangard Collection and also our food and beverage businesses. It's the hotel part of our deals. And uh, Lucis Initiative is, is the investment body, which is also bringing the right managing and investor parties together in, in a number of different uh, concepts, which I will tell you in details right now. Uh, the, the first one is uh, EDUCOS, uh, which, which is actually aiming to uh, transfer our hospitality know-how to 
to the rest of the business services, to the rest of the service industries, which are in need of more like a guest orientation, guest approach, how to handle your customers, your uh, clients, as if they are, let's say, a hotel guest, or they are, let's say, someone who is in, in a very delicate attention of. So that's, that's the reason we have uh, established EDUCOS, and it's now, uh, especially thanks to our guestology uh, training product, which is uh, aiming to create sustainable guest experience in uh, different service industries. What I mean by different service industries are uh, uh, hospitals, airlines businesses, retail businesses, uh, food and beverage businesses. So uh, each and every service industries which are having relevant departments and touching to the end users are uh, potential clients of EDUCOS. And also, we are very much keen on uh, providing international, internationally recognized uh, companies, trained employees. So I know uh, Eastern Europe is also quite uh, interesting in terms of high caliber uh, human resources. And also, I mean, you are in a great position because you are being uh, recognized. Uh, you have a free travel uh, opportunity to European Union. Uh, you have, uh, I mean, by the time you uh, have the undergraduation uh, uh, education, you are uh, perfectly speaking of uh, speaking English and also some other languages. But uh, in our Turkish example, uh, we were not that much, uh, I would say, lucky from our um, human resources. So that's also the same reason why we have established EDUCOS. First, to give industry-specific uh, experiences and trainings, and to help uh, our uh, young uh, workforce to become much more ready by the time they will go to the service industries. So, I mean, for instance, we have uh, clients like Turkish Airlines, we have clients like uh, Ajibadam Hospitals, we have uh, clients like uh, Garanti Bank, Deniz Bank, or like famous retail uh, chains like. Uh, Wako uh, and some others. So it's uh, quite uh, interesting in that sense uh, that we have founded EDUCOS. And uh, Soluto is much more easier to uh, describe what it is. I mean, uh, as I told you, uh, the whole Turkish uh, economy is now composed of 45 to 50 percent of real estate and construction. And uh, all these developers that's uh, having a market share, they, they just have to develop more and more projects. So let's say, I mean, you, you, you have also started to have big projects, shopping malls, high rises, residences, offices, whatever you name it. But uh, the, the developer's mentality is always finishing one project, but going to another one. And while they're marketing those projects, you know, there are some huge promises behind those projects from guest services to uh, concierge services and from basic cleaning and security and everything that you would imagine of. That's a promise. You know, sometimes you go and buy a property or sometimes you go and uh, rent a place. And then, uh, but those promises by the developers have to be met by third parties. So that's why we have uh, founded Soluto. And uh, Soluto is uh, right now managing a good number of shopping malls, uh, residential units, uh, office buildings, and uh, school campuses, uh, industrial zones in all around Turkey. And uh, it's going quite interesting now. And uh, our uh, most recent uh, brand, Assembly, which is a year, a year old, uh, is uh, actually what we have in, uh, invented for office buildings and we are uh, managing now office buildings as if they are hotel buildings. So, you know, think of, I mean, you will be the future uh, employees of these multinational companies uh, or local uh, strong companies that's uh, 
you know, in a high rise or like in an office park, whatever you name it. But think of those buildings that's helping you or serving you as if once you enter to, the, to those office buildings, you are being welcomed as if you, you are in a hotel building. You are getting the same type of guest services, hospitality services, as if you are in a hotel building, food and beverage services. And finally, this famous uh, concept, uh, is, uh, which is shaking all around the world, is co-working spaces. So uh, under the assembly brand, we are also providing co-working space services, which is bringing uh, even the smallest businesses, which can be like 5 to 10 square meters of space, or those uh, co-working spaces is also providing membership options. So once you will step into the, uh, like the business industries of all kinds, you don't have to rent a whole, like a huge floor or like a huge building, whatever you name it, but instead you can just go and pay for a membership and you can be in a part of great sharing environment, which is co-working spaces. So that's what also assembly is able to provide. We, are, we have started in Istanbul in a uh, 125,000 square meters of uh, office uh, complex, which is now uh, housing companies like uh, the largest food and beverage uh, chain of, of Europe, uh, Delivery Hero, or uh, McKinsey, Nike, White & Case, uh, companies like that from all around the world. And uh, now that I'm, I'm done with our corporate investments, I'm, I'll jump into the, my individual investments, uh, which will be much more, uh, I think, enjoyable. <laughs> uh, uh, Lidiana.com is uh, what I have uh, co-founded as, as, as the uh, leading investor in almost um, nine years ago, when I was uh, 24 years old. And it's uh, the, uh, one of the leading uh, fashion e-commerce brands in Turkey, which is uh, bringing the very famous uh, international and also local fashion brands under one platform. So uh, we, we do either buy from like uh, the famous brands or we do provide them a market, market uh, place opportunity or uh, we have third party producers that's, uh, pro uh, that's producing private label brands for Lidiana. So we have our own brands as well. And uh, it has uh, so far uh, attracted uh, also international investors, f uh, investment funds to uh, become uh, an interesting uh, brand to invest for. So we have also in terms of that international investors as well as local investors like myself or uh, some famous uh, business people like founders of Marcafoni, founders of Yemeksepete.com or uh, like the uh, most famous uh, football player in Turkey, Arda Turan, one of our uh, investors. So it's uh, and it was an interesting venture for me and then I, I discovered that, you know, e-commerce and uh, technology platforms are also uh, helpful in two ways. First, it's helping to my uh, traditional businesses because uh, I, I, I had the opportunity to become partners with the uh, local and international uh, reliable business people at the same time. And it helped me to uh, bring the right parties together and also... Uh, work with those people together at the same time. So then I, I, I decided to uh, go into more uh, technology investments. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to Asiability later on. Uh, so that's uh, one of them is Endeavor Catalyst. So uh, Endeavor is a New York and San Francisco based um, high impact entrepreneurship organization. Uh, and it's almost, I would say, tw uh, 20 years old. And it has offices uh, all around the world. And what it does is it helps uh, the entrepreneur candidates to 
have access to capital and the right network all around the world for the businesses that they think like uh, can be an international success. So we have a, also an active office in Istanbul, which is 13 years old, and I'm a mentor of uh, that office, as well as I'm, I'm, the, uh, I'm one of the investors of its Catalyst Fund, which is based in uh, Silicon Valley. And uh, also, uh, 500 is also another San Francisco-based uh, early stage uh, investment fund, which is uh, quite famous in, in its uh, industry. And uh, to almost three years ago, we have founded uh, 500, is, uh, 500 Startups Istanbul Fund, which is uh, uh, targeting for uh, entrepreneurs who are either living in uh, Turkey or living in uh, Turkic uh, countries or it, uh, they can also live all around the world, but we are, I mean, our main concentration is to invest into uh, entrepreneurship companies whose founders are, uh, or co-founders are Turkish. Uh, and we have like 35 investments right now all around the world, from uh, US, from London, from Europe, all around, from Eastern Europe. And uh, finally, uh, that's uh, my uh, most uh, recent uh, partnership, joint venture, which is almost one year ago. And uh, I, I became partners with a UK-based, uh, London-based uh, company, which has almost 45 years of China experience. And uh, together with uh, those uh, British partners of mine, uh, we have been helping uh, Turkish companies to take them to China, become partners with Chinese uh, state-owned or private sector companies, or uh, we are bringing, we have been bringing Chinese capital to Turkey or to nearby uh, neighborhood uh, countries of Turkey, which uh, Turkish companies are active of. So in terms of that, Eastern Europe is also quite interesting for us. And also, Africa is quite interesting to us. And that's, uh, I mean, as, as, as you might uh, already know, uh, China is like uh, one-sixth of the, the world's uh, total economy, and it has a huge appetite to make investments all around the world, including Eastern Europe and Turkey. Okay, so... Um, okay. So from now on, that's, that was the boring part. So I, will, I, will, I would love to be uh, more interactive uh, from now on by uh, sharing my own uh, observations from my business uh, experiences as well as social experiences. Uh, so far, I mean, if there is any questions that you would like to ask or anything you would like to know, I will be happy to answer that. I told you about uh, lots of uh, ongoing businesses that uh, we are still uh, running with uh, a number of investors and also uh, managing partners. But of course, we we are also learning from our failures, from our uh, also negative experiences. So uh, I just, I mean. The right hand side and also the uh, next slides from now on will be uh, with my own words. So I didn't just uh, download it from Google or something because 
everything is uh, in a way uh, experienced either in a good or bad way so uh, on this slide I just want to uh, let you know about our two uh, negative experiences that uh, which I'm just trying to uh, help you understand that sometimes you know you, you have just a great idea that you think like okay now I go, I'm going to make a billion dollars from this business but time to time it's not uh, working because of not just because of you but also because of the uh, most recent market circumstances so I had two in terms of that uh, the Mavi Cap uh, business uh, which is written just over there it was uh, an uh, online uh, online uh, private courses and online education startup of startup of ours and uh, we have uh, in a way tried to uh, liberalize the education by uh, allowing uh, more and more uh, students to get proper uh, international education from all around Turkey because as you know Turkey is now uh, with uh, in including the uh, the migrants and everything we have we are we have more than 80 million people but not the whole uh, country has the opportunity to get the very best uh, education which you can have in uh, IBU so we thought like having an online uh, let's say education platform uh, and uh, we have this uh, thing like Dersane I don't know if they have it in in, in uh, Macedonia but uh, so it was like an online dersane in that sense anyway so uh, but uh, we had a, a major political issue in Turkey which uh, which uh, also pushed all these uh, on-site uh, private education uh, houses dersanes to shut down uh, so uh, the uh, so it didn't and the market just uh, became zero out of a sudden in terms of this private education houses so then we have also decided to shut down the online version of it because it wasn't allowed uh, by by law in that sense and uh, so Mavi Camp was our uh, first failure uh, which uh, didn't cause because of us but it was a failure and uh, Sabamer uh, Sabamer was uh, actually aiming to uh, provide certifications for construction and hotel industries and to their employees to make sure that there will be a standard uh, qualification for each and every industries of those uh, of construction and hospitality and they, there will be an examination for uh, those employees in these two markets and if they are going to pass those examinations they will be allowed to uh, work in that uh, two industries uh, however because of the um, you know because of the economical crisis we have had over the last uh, four or five years uh, you know while companies were surviving to uh, pay their salaries or just uh, try to finish their projects and everything they were not keen on uh, this certifications and standardizations and everything and uh, so the market itself didn't fit, fit perfectly with that business idea we had so we we just decided to exit from the business and then shut down the market but uh, what I would like to tell you finally is I mean from from this slide is I mean you there is no way you can be successful for the rest of your life I mean time to time we have to learn from our also negative experiences so uh, that's the failure part and uh, here that's uh, also with my own words uh, what what I'm just uh, trying to help you understand is you know you 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 could have a like the best idea in the world I like you can just wake up out of a sudden one day and you can just say okay I'm going to hit the market I'll, I'll be just uh, this this will be a game changer for me and everything but if you have if you don't have a strong execution team 
as strong as the idea that you think like that's going to be the best, then it's not going to work at all. I mean, you cannot be, I mean, as, as the owner of the idea, as, as the entrepreneur, you cannot be successful by yourself. I mean, you will be needing a great team to delegate uh, those uh, bits and pieces, those uh, levels of uh, division of labor that the business requires. Otherwise, I mean, you cannot be successful by yourself. I mean, uh, if you are like watching the football and everything, I mean, it's not even Lionel Messi by himself that's making Barcelona successful. So you will be needing that team, that Iniesta, that Xavi, that uh, Suarez and everything to become successful. And uh, also, on the other hand, I mean, you can have like a good idea or even an average idea. But you, you, if you have a great team also, that's my own belief and that's based on my uh, previous experiences. If you have that great team together with you, they, the team will help you to make the average or like good, okay idea into a great one. So that's uh, my observation, one of my observations. Okay, so uh, this one, what I'm, what I'm trying to uh, help you understand is, I mean, if you have like uh, great friends that you would love to spend time together, like go to movies, like uh, play PlayStation, whatever you would like to say, but which doesn't help you to uh, take your business idea or take your entrepreneurship level to the next stage, then, I mean, it's just, okay, I mean, having great time, which we all love. My friends and everything but uh, in general the life is not going to be generous to you as if you are so, there will be ups and downs uh, there will be okay great times but uh, the most of the time you will not be hitting the jackpot so uh, we have to keep the uh, reality as much as possible and uh, running the marathon is mean, what it means to me is, you know, I, w I have always uh, decided to go for, you know, sustainable long-term relationships. So rather than, okay, I mean, this guy could be great, we can make a fortune with this guy, but the guy can, be, can disappear the next day. So please do not rely on those type of relationships. That's my uh, humble uh, suggestion to you. And uh, as, 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 as uh, you have uh, observed uh, from my uh, business presentation, uh, I have lots of companies and lots of partnerships. In, in, in one business, I have 25 partners. In another business, I have 17 partners. I think altogether it could be like maybe 100 or something, but uh, I, I'm always trying to uh, be the uh, leading uh, investor and majority partner in those businesses. But uh, apart 
partnership can be crowded. You know, at this, uh, I mean, on the other hand, uh, of course, I mean, if you want to like make a startup, you are in need of a capital, and then I mean, the capital means that you you cannot always have it, the whole capital in your uh, pocket. So that's where the partnerships are needed. At at one case, and also the second case is the managing partnership model. You know, time to time. Uh, it's not possible for the whole partners to put the same amount of money to a business, but uh, the managing partnership is also helping to make less mistakes, uh, to uh, be you know, more precise when you are starting up a business. And uh, if you are able to uh, bring the right multitask teams together, which are uh, able to accomplish, accomplish a number of different uh, needs of that business at the same time, then that's a perfect partnership which can still be crowded. So do not be afraid of sharing your business. I mean, you may not have 100% share uh, holding of that business by yourself, but please concentrate on uh, partnership, partnerships from the very first day that can help you to make that business as much as valuable. So just <laughs> Think of sharing 1,000 one of, of a business instead of concentrating on just 100% uh, shares by yourself. And uh, what I mean by uh, reporting is great, however, eyes and hearts and souls must see each other is, I mean, we are, we have all uh, like raised in a culture which the corporate structures, institutionalism, uh, and uh, being as corporate as possible, being a holding company, important X, Y, Z, okay, that's still fine. But uh, even if uh, you are going to make a partnership for two, or let's say 10, 20, uh, please make sure that build a platform which those partners will be able to see each other, talk with each other, share things with each other, and connect with each other by all means. And once you start to spend time together as a partnership, that's the exact time when the real values are coming, real outcomes are being produced. So that's the reason why I'm, uh, is like when I set up a business, I do uh, immediately set up like WhatsApp groups and uh, like we have like weekly meetings and uh, there is a 724 policy. So with this way also, you are also able to uh, finish the bureaucracy within a, uh, within a uh, business that uh, I would be highly recommended. Okay, so uh, what I'm uh, meaning by uh, sustainability is in line with uh, common benefits is, you know, I, I don't believe in uh, the type of partnerships which only one side is making profits or one side is happy. If each and every partners are happy at the end of the day, then that's where the sustainability comes. I mean, otherwise, uh, if, if someone is just purely thinking of other partners' profits, other partners' Uh, outcomes from that business without being happy and without with with the feeling that okay I could have done this much of profit or I could have done uh, this much of value out of business but see it's not me it's my partner then uh, the problems are starting to arise which uh, I would say uh, it needs to be thought of from the very first day, and all the parties have be law, have to be very much open to each other about expectations in a business. Uh, I'm this one. Your network is your network is quite famous uh, crowd, as we all know. But I think that's the most important reality in the world. Uh, well, I mean. Uh, Visar could be the most famous guy in this uh, campus uh, after our uh, uh, vice dean, I'm sure. 
but uh, if and it could be in a university, it could be in a business, it could be in a social environment, but if the people you have met, you are doing business, you are having like social relationship, uh, if you are keeping those people just by yourself, and let's say, for instance, you know very well that that friend or that business social contact of yours could be also helpful to the other friend of yours. But you just rather think like, oh, okay, this, this friend of mine or this contact of mine is very valuable, so okay, let me keep it by my, for my side. But that's, that's not going to be ending up with the best outcomes. You know? But if you are going to share it with the third party, with your other friend, with your uh, other social uh, relationship, then you are going to increase the multiplier effect. Because that those, uh, I mean the other two, that's going to be, you know, potentially helping to each other, creating more values, will we'll get back to you at least with a thank, at least with a uh, graduation, at least with an appreciation. So uh, that's how I, I have been living in my life uh, like since uh, I, I, I was in high school and it always helped me to reach out to more and more benefits. Okay, so uh, trust is a big issue for each and every of us and we are having disappointments in our family, in our like, business or social relationships. <laughs> Uh, with our like uh, teachers, with our friends, whatever you, uh, however you name it. But what I would suggest is, uh, you know, start to, or tr at least try to trust yourself from the level of 100 and share all your resources that you think like you have with, with each other. Okay, I mean, uh, on that very point, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that some of ours can think like, okay, I mean, if I'm going to give all of my uh, trust to the, to the other party, I could face with a disappointment. I could be unhappy. I could, uh, I mean, the other party can be harmful to me. You can also prevent this by setting up your uh, expectations from the very first day. You can just share your resources, your trust, your love, your passion with the other party, but just be open and say that I'm happy or I'll be sustainable, our relationship can be consistent if we are going to be clear cut to us in X, Y, Z uh, phases. Being a realist with feasible and achievable hopes ahead. Uh, but I, I just uh, want to know more about my uh, great friend students. Uh, so I just want to just choose uh, some uh, friends of ours randomly and ask what it means to uh, those friends of ours. Unless uh, there is a candidate that's going to raise hands, I will I will uh, take the liberty and choose it myself. What does it mean? What does it mean? Yeah. 
realistic uh, does mean uh, to be realistic that our strengths and weaknesses, if we have a goal to achieve, and uh, but I learned something from you as a businessman, you or you also really successful, but you spoke like a motivational speaker without specific situation in your in your path. I would like to to hear that we listen a lot of situation, own situation, to to be more uh, for us motivational. And uh, realistic does does mean what we have in our in in ourselves and and how we will manage ourselves. Thank you. It's it's not it's not uh, harmful to uh, hope for things for the future and. Uh, there is the saying like, if you have the dream, if you have the hope for something that you would like to achieve, then it makes 50% of your success, which I do also agree with. And if you are not dreaming for something to happen, because it's a tunnel, and you have to dream for the daylight at the end. However, those tunnel uh, must be in line with your realities, with that market's realities, with that uh, time to time, with that country's realities, with your personal strengths and weaknesses, uh, so that it can be achievable. Uh, that's what I'm uh, trying to say, and um, um, I agree with you. I, I will improve my presentation from now on with the real time cases, but then uh, the the board has to give me like six hours or something. <laughs> Otherwise, I cannot finish it. But I have like four four uh, four more slides, and then I'm happy to if there's any, I'm happy to take questions. Um, that's also uh, quite meaningful for me. But before I'm going to go deeper, I'll take another week. What does it mean? Okay. Uh, you, you were saying when teaching in the class, you made this uh, meditation that you ate in there, right? Yeah. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> no problem. Let's go for the next victim. Do you have something to share with us? Yes. Why not? Give it a try. Give it a try. Give it a try. 
No problem. <laughs> Uh, change of university and then you take one last day to shoot, you prepare yourself for the future and when they say you guess it, whatever you you gone through it is gonna be your future. So whatever your education had or your experience during your life is what you should guess in the future for you. Yeah. Your experience, whatever your experience, it's a guess. But this is something that we professor keep saying to our students. Mm. Usually we're going to tell them something, open the door to the knowledge, and they said, would I need this professor? You never know, the future is a guess. You never know this knowledge that I'm giving to you now, whether it will be useful or not in your life. But be prepared, buy a ticket with your knowledge, be educated, and therefore the future will be really open the door for you. This is for that's what we are seeing here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
box with each box, while men have a box which don't paint or don't do anything with it there. So I guess we should not keep that box and we should not do anything more painting. We should paint even if we're not trying to paint. So for me, virgin, uh, while we are not virgin means, it's not just nine to six. Uh, and uh, while except the actual hours of working that we are having and you are going to have very soon, while you are having a social interaction, uh, going to uh, enjoying your private times and reading things, meeting people, X, Y, Z, if your brain keeps working, uh, working about the things that will help you to work in the near future, then it, mean, it means that you are working while you are not working. So it's, and the working process itself is, is a long one. So it's not like nine to six itself. So if you have that mentality, which is to work while you are not working, then you can actually work from all around the world. It's not going to be nine to six. It's not going to be in an office environment. It's not going to be just, uh, and at the same time, you can gain your freedom because you are not limited to working hours. You are not limited to a space. So you can do like finalize your own assignments, but at the same time, the brain continues to work. So it will help you to accomplish things more faster than you will think. So that's what's my uh, idea. So that's, I guess, my show of my last slides. And uh, which uh, is very, very important to me. Uh, you will be the uh, future business leaders. You will be the future top employees of a number of good companies. You can be, you can stay here, you can just set up an uh, excellent business and uh, we would love to visit like five years, 10 years from now on. Uh, but at the same time, you can be in all around the world. You can be in Europe, in Africa, in China, US. But whatever you are going to achieve, wherever uh, you will be going and spending uh, the most of your time doing business, just uh, engaging socially, <coughs> setting up families, please uh, never forget about where you are born and how you what you are grateful for, how you, how your family has helped you to reach to that level. So please always feel indebted, feel that you have things to do for your own country. So there are such fragmented uh, countries all around the world, in Middle East, in Africa, and uh, those people had to leave their countries like many many years ago but and uh, eastern europe uh, some countries has faced that realities but of course you might have to travel or go uh, to live and work for in some other countries but please whatever you gain whatever you produce please bring at least a part of your value of your wealth back to your country and never Forget about your own uh, soils. Okay, that's how I have been raised myself uh, uh, through my family journey. Uh, two, uh, two realities we have always faced with. Uh, my family, uh, thanks to both of my grandfathers and my father, uh, we had, uh, you know, such a strong sharing culture. And uh, I just want to uh, define it with uh, my uh, grandfather's, uh, one of his quotes, one of his forewords. Uh, he, he has passed away like 15 years ago, but uh, when 
after after his funeral, while we 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 were checking his own uh, office, and in one of one of those drawers, we have found uh, such uh, strong and such uh, important uh, guidelines for our future business and social lives, and that was uh, one of it. Even if you don't have anyone to brainstorm, to ask, to consult something for, just ask to the stone, just standing next to you. I mean, the, the most insignificant, the most unimportant stone, that's just, you can even just hit it yourself, but just ask to that stone. And it's, of course, uh, a metaphor, but what he he meant to say was you could be like the most successful business uh, figures you could be like you could feel very much strong as if you can do everything by yourself but if you are going to brainstorm on things if you are going to share what you have in hand what you have in mind and double check reconfirm re-verify the information that or the talent or the business idea you you think like you have then it's going to be double stronger triple stronger so that was what he uh, helped us to learn and the second one is the competitive internal family culture of my family uh, so you know when i when I uh, when I born and when I was raised, I mean, we have a number of uh, companies that I could just sit down and live comfortably for the rest of my life, but it didn't happen like that. And when we were just primarily starting to to do business, we didn't have like, okay, you have the car, you have the business, you have the house, X Y Z. Instead of that. We just had to go and get it by ourselves, by making our own effort, making our own space, making our own presence, working with professionals and pushing as much as we can to prove ourselves in our family, in our businesses. And it's in my 15 years of experience, it was one of the most I would say strong foundations in my life that I have learned from my family. And finally, uh, as uh, Vizar said also, I have uh, two uh, children for the age of six and uh, also age of almost four. I'm, uh, as I told, like a little bit more than 33 years old, but uh, Having children, I, I'm, I'm sure that it's uh, long, uh, long-term long planning in your life right now. And uh, getting married, having children, at least, I mean, most of you. Uh, but uh, once you are going to get married and have children, please, that's what uh, I'm observing for right now uh, with, the, with the daughter at the age of six, which is questioning everything in life you could imagine of. And uh, which is also a reverse mentoring. What I mean by reverse mentoring is once you start to hear from things, uh, from the, the most precious thing in your life, uh, it's like a mirror to you, you know? So it's a reflection of who you are in reality, who you are by heart, uh, by soul. So just encourage them, not just not to say them, okay, stop. There is no need. I'm your father. I'm your mother. Don't question X, Y, Z. Instead of that, help them to question as much as you like and use it as an opportunity, like a reverse mentoring. That's going to, uh, that you will make the most of it as your mirror. So uh, I was, uh, I have grown up with uh, the Turkey's leading <coughs> educational scientist, uh, Dr. Özgür. Who is a, who also came from the from a farmers uh, farmer parents family from Antalya. I mean, he got his uh, scholarships from Boğaziçi University, then Harvard University, then 
Cambridge University, Stanford University, so everything that you would imagine of. <coughs> and uh, that's based on his technique of uh, being a right parent and raising the children as, uh, as uh, in the very best way possible. And uh, that was uh, my uh, most uh, recent uh, achievement, uh, which is being one of the uh, 40 top uh, CEOs in Turkey last year. Uh, together with uh, my oh, together with my other uh, business and social affiliations which I just wanted to show you at last because uh, it's the most healthiest way to combine both business and social interactions in life just don't be purely business addict but just go back uh, to my slide which is working while you are not working those type of social affiliations are also very much helpful to you while you are enjoying your time but at the same time uh, finding new connections making your new friendships to also help you in terms of your social benefits in terms of your business benefits uh, and uh, those are my uh, uh, business and social affiliations so I'm uh, very much thankful for this uh, opportunity being here uh, I have had the chance to deliver speeches in, in a number of different universities in Turkey but that was my first international experience so I just want to thank to all of you for this opportunity and thank you so much I'm open to questions, if there is any. Can I ask you something? Please. Uh, you showed us how we can be uh, successful in our life. Uh, you showed the steps, but I think first step is not we, uh, if we will do that, uh, can we make, our, can we make uh, ourselves happy or can we make uh, our family happy, right? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. If we can do that, uh, how we can be successful, how we can be happy in our life, right? Yeah, of course. And I, uh, you told your, uh, you told us your about your life, and you are so very busy man, right? I'm trying to uh, keep myself busy. <laughs> I will ask something uh, special question. Are you married, right? Yes, I do. Uh, do you have children? Two. Can you see? Uh, can you saw, Can you see them uh, all the time or right? No. Uh, that's that's a great question uh, I do if I'm not traveling for business uh, I do get up early and take them to school every day so you have been to you are from Turkey yeah. okay you know about Istanbul yeah. you know about the traffic yeah. so I, I, I uh, drive uh, to Asian side and to like uh, give a ride to one of my uh, children to her uh, elementary school then uh, I drive back from the other uh, bridge back to uh, European side like every every day in the morning which is like almost two hours just to spend time with them in the car but <laughs> that's not enough by itself uh, also the the business that I'm in which is hospitality and business services is not like nine to six so I can be at home at a late time uh, but I'm just trying to take them uh, I mean you just focus for the weekends and uh, take as much as credits as you can and then uh, you have to organize if you are going to be as busy as I am uh, going to vacations are very important uh, using the weekend opportunity is very important and also if you have uh, the right friendship with the right families which you have you are enjoying to spend good time but also their children are also good friends with your children then that's a privilege because you can also at the same time it's not only spending time with your children you are a busy businessman so you have to enjoy yourself as well 
But if if you have that type of friends, which you can also make good friends as a parent, and also if your children can be also good friends, then that's a perfect match. You can save time at the same can time. Do you, <laughs> you miss uh, some uh, some special time for your children? I do. I do. That's you know spending time with your children is endless. I mean because they are like the most objective system in the world. As much time as you will give, they will love you more and more. They will love you more and more. So that's a you know that's a positive correlation. If you if you are going to have time to give more, they will give you more. They will love you more. So there is no equation, there is no limit, you just have to keep it as much as you can. Sorry? Quality. Yeah. Spending, but quality. Of course, quality spending, yeah. Do you plan to invest in Macedonia? <laughs> is there an opportunity? Always. Huh? <laughs> it's up to you. It's up to you from now on. After you. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. What are your plans for the near future, and what do you think about cryptocurrency? Okay. <laughs> well, um, I didn't uh, presentation, but last April, I I'm also one of the founding investors of a cryptocurrency platform in Turkey. Uh, the name is Bitlo. B I T L O, uh, and so it's an exchange, obviously. So you can buy crypto coin, uh, cryptocurrencies. And uh, I think it's not uh, the cryptocurrency itself which is the most important. I mean, it's okay, it's it's important, uh, but what's the most important is the blockchain system. It's end-to-end -end transactions, end-to-end -end relationship, real-time, the exact moment. So uh, it will be very much useful for a much more united, integrated financial system. And trading system, and also more transparent system in the world. So I think blockchain is going to be for the world. And Turkey is uh, trying to uh, be in line uh, as much as it can, but there is also there's a lot. I would say there are still lots of opportunities ahead. That's my idea. Okay. You sure? The same question it was? No. <laughs> we are still friends, right? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> okay. Good. It was you, right? Okay. Thank you. So, we heard about your life history, and when you success the most, you fail. And we saw that you failed only two times. But, uh, so I far. So far. Yeah. Uh, but no, I want to know do you have a time or situation when you messed up really bad? You said, okay, I'm done, I'm giving up, I cannot. Go oh, ahead. Okay. And we are seeing that you didn't send that. But what was the motivation, the drive behind your action, and you didn't stop there? Mm -hmm. So can you explain it to motivate mm -hmm. me and my friend? Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Of course. Uh, well, uh, that's a good question, which I didn't go further to that much in my own experience because. I'm a believer of measurable risks, not like, you know, as you might have seen, I'm not interested in the jackpot. So I, I all of my businesses are long term, long lasting relationships and based on feasible studies, business plans. So you can fail. You don't I mean, you cannot be like 100 percent successful at the end. But, you know, if you are going to be keen on, concentrated on the, before you enter to a business, just 
business plan and the feasibility study, profit and losses, SWOT analysis. They are, if you are going to be like concentrated on those uh, figures, like very seriously, very responsibly, then you will not end up with a huge disappointment. So that was my uh, startup, business startup experience. And even in these two uh, businesses that I failed, I didn't have a huge disappointment. Of course, I mean, it's not, uh, it's a lose of time. Of course it is, but if you can be a believer of that business, I, I had huge belief of, of those businesses and I was thinking like, okay, this could be maybe uh, a couple of hundred millions worth of valuation. But that's also a trap. If you start to think, if you start to see, observe that the business itself is going to fail, there is a chance to fail, be objective and just get out of the train. Otherwise, it's a trap for you. Yes, for sure. And more and more losses. Um, I have two questions. Sure. And I hope to be real in your answers. Not the last thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> first is, um, you explained how your this business is passed from your grandfather to your dad, not to you. Um, are you giving your education to your children as your parents gave to you and your brother? Mm -hmm. This is the first. Or are you fulfilling every of their wishes and everything? Can I answer Second? to that? Yes. Um, I, I didn't get the same amount of uh, educational care from my, ch uh, from my parents. So uh, we are now uh, pushing times more than what we used to experience when I was a child. So, you know, my mother is time to time uh, just say, uh, telling to me that Okay, Ismet, am I the one who, who has raised you? <laughs> How can you be this uh, pushing to your children? So uh, we didn't see that, but uh, 25, almost 30 years that I have been through uh, that uh, stage of my life. And right now, uh, raising a children is more challenging, more hard, and you are questioning lots of things about their future and how they ha need to be educated so you just don't go with the flow so it's it's more uh, i would say demanding right now and the second is have you ever thought or willing to open since everyone here i guess me i'm thinking a bit of a luxury view have you ever thought of opening a charity organization uh, for your country well uh, you know, Turkey is the first country in the world uh, compared to its GDP uh, and the, the first country in the world that's been opening up charities like providing social and like financial helps all around the world. So, and that's uh, multiplied that I don't know the number of the charities but uh, that's from early 2000s up until now which is like last 15 years or something when also I myself so from the age of 18 till to the age of 33 so we have raised in that culture in Turkey so uh, that's also a part of our religious belief to share what you have with the rest of the people. So we are, we are quietly as family or myself as individually uh, providing help to, but we just don't use it as a PR. But we are, we have been doing like charity works and everything. So but as a form of type of it. We have to finish? Maybe. Okay. Last question if you like. <laughs> Okay, last two, last two, okay. short one. Okay.
Uh, is there any time that you got bored with the work that you do, that you are busy every day? Ask me again. <laughs> is there any time that you get bored with the, with the work that you do? Mm. Uh, there are things, time to time of course, which uh, is pushing you a lot and you just got bored and you just don't want to do that business and everything but uh, the reward is of course is not for free yeah. so if you want to reach out to that final goal like the private villa with the pool the private jet and everything so you, you have to be patient and you have to just break that boredness you know you have to go like uh, like this so you cannot give up that's 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 how I'm how I'm working so all the time but of course it's not like uh, a garden full of roses at the end of the day so there are ups and downs you're welcome yes can you help thank you. first let me thank you for being here and representing what you have done you. Uh, i appreciate your impressive biography first thank you. and the second the modesty through which you explained and presented to us thank you you didn't use the words i did this i did that this is my company so thank you for that too and my question, because I don't understand business and I'm in psychology, okay. it will be in that uh, kind of point of view. Uh, what do you consider but to be... All, all business people have to end up to visit you. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's the reality. That's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, what do you consider to be your um, uh, primary factors or your uh, personality characteristics that led to your success? Because of course you had the foundation, from your family, but that needed to be continued uh, forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, no, I, I, I uh, recently uh, started to use that word to describe my, my characteristic, which is, uh, which a good number of Turkish people is very much strong of, which is agility. A G I L I T Y. Agile. Being agile. I mean, which is facing with each and every Situation. situations in life, but still Remaining back to the real life, standing up and never giving up. And being in line with your projections and with your plans and everything so i i uh, describe myself as agile and uh, but if you ask to my father he keeps telling me you are so stubborn but that's uh, the old school way of describing it so i'm persistent i i i i i, I don't give up easily but coming back to our friend's question here I do give up just in a second if the business or the relationship itself is not uh, healthily uh, still going in the in the like in the correct way that it should be. And uh, I'm caring, sharing at the same time. So, and I love to uh, describe things with the we uh, understanding, not I. So, because it's not just by yourself at the end of the day, there is a huge team, which I have like uh, almost 1,300 employees together with myself, together with top officials and managing partners, time to time investor partners. So I'm representing them in a number of different cases. Thank you. Thank you. You have to thank them once again. To, to thank, to to thank, thank everyone. Uh, so I'm proud and very happy to be here and uh, I think uh, with this more and more developing campus of yours you will be for sure the future uh, business industry leaders and uh, I would love to uh, I mean Visa has all my details please feel free to email me all the time you like and uh, very importantly I'm sure how many of you has Instagram accounts? Okay. How many of you has LinkedIn accounts? What? LinkedIn accounts. Yeah. 
you obvious to the question what means he doesn't have it. <laughs> what means? <laughs> the first like, what? Link in the comments, yeah. so if a student asks what, okay. he obviously doesn't have one. Yeah, that's that's very <laughs> obvious, but you know, please open an LinkedIn account as soon as possible. You will be needing for the rest of your life and keep it updated all the time and start having a LinkedIn account by saying I'm, I'm a student but a dedicated student and I'm in this XYZ social clubs uh, and I, I forgot to tell you when I was a student in, in university I have set up the uh, like the social business social club and the name was uh, future leaders of Turkey so it was when I was 19 years old. don't that underestimate yourself you have lots of things to do and we have hosted a great number of uh, business leaders political figures and uh, that's the reason why I'm here today because I have learned a lot from their experiences when I was a student when I had the open channels and trying to find my own way so please set up clubs if I'm, I'm sure you, they, they have like there, there is a good number of but and I'm also happy to support that type of a club with a number of other speakers so that uh, also with other opportunities in Turkey uh, so thanks to all of you and uh, great I'm very happy and privileged to be hosted by you. Thank you very much. Just one more, one more minute on stage. Uh, obviously, your presentation was very much interesting because we are almost two hours here together. Yeah. This is a privilege for every guest lecturer at IBU. Except that guy. <laughs> Except that guy that <laughs> ran away. Yeah. Uh, I kindly ask the Vice Director, Professor Bidali, and the Vice President of the Board, Mr. Jevahir, in memory of this great day and your great lecture and sharing experience to present a small gift for you. That's this is a picture, a painting of the students of the Faculty of Art and Design. Ah. So in one of those billions of companies in the world, please put it on a wall and remember that one day you presented at IBU. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll do that. Okulumuzun da bir şeyi olsun. Mikrofonumuzda kaldı bu arada. Ağzınıza kıldır. Teşekkür ederim. Ağzınıza sağ olun. Ne demek? Onur duydum. Çok naziksiniz. Çok teşekkür ederim. Sağ olun. 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 Sağ olun.